This is the QNAP TS328. That three is the number of drive bays, which makes this a pretty unusual NAS, but we're gonna take a look at it, so stick around. Now, as I mentioned, the three here is kind of the, the big deal with this NAS. It comes with three drive bays. Most of the NASs that you're gonna be looking at are two and four drive bay NASs, or upwards if you're a sort of small, medium business, or I guess, you know, the, the two, four to two is normally the range for your sort of home media NAS. Now this one uh, kind of offers two different options for that third bay. You can either use it with an extra hard drive and use it in a RAID 5 configuration, which is in theory a bit safer than RAID 1 because it stores a lot of your data on all three drives so that you have to have more drives fail to, to actually lose any data. But uh, with this configuration and with the, the drive sled that it comes in, you can also use a 2.5 inch SSD as a cache and acceleration drive. Now this feature is something that QNAP NASes all support, but the fact that this has a third bay really kind of signifies that this is what they intend you to do with it. Now it does list on the box the RAID 5 support, but the fact that that drive bay comes pre-sledded uh, and it comes with a pretty substantial drive sled explicitly for a two and a half inch drive, I'm gonna go with the, the subtext is you're gonna be using this with an SSD cache, which makes it a pretty impressive media server. Now the caveat to that is that the quad-core Realtek CPU and the four gigs of DDR4 RAM that the NAS has actually don't support a lot of the applications that you would normally be using. Things like Plex and virtual machines aren't supported on this NAS, and while they may be coming in future updates, uh, the architecture of the CPU just doesn't currently allow for that. I would also mention that while the cache acceleration works well with a lot of the applications that you can get. It's mostly for your sort of file applications and I would uh, happily mention that this has gigabit ethernet on the back. It actually has two of them which is nice for port trunking and even, you know, in theory failover and redundancy. But I would also mention that it only has one power supply and one power supply input so there's no redundancy on that front. But either way, it's nice to see the gigabit ethernet uh, and also you do have USB 3 on the back as well. Since we started doing a bit of a tour of the device, you can also take a look at the front where you have another USB 3 ports. You also have the power button and a whole load of indicators for each of the drive bays, network activity, power, and stuff like that. Um, getting into and installing the drives is fairly easy. There's three screws on the back and then you slide the housing off and that reveals the three drive bays. Now the drive sleds themselves are actually pretty flimsy. They're basically just the front that clicks in and locks the drives in place and then two thin bits of plastic on the side with sort of rubber shock mounts that hold the drive in place. But it's really pretty difficult difficult to get a drive into these. There's no sort of uh, actual rear sled that holds them in place or anything. Um, and it's basically just the metal cage in the actual uh, NAS itself that holds those pins into the, the drive. So it's a little bit of a, a kind of uh, budget oriented offering in terms of the drive sleds, but it works decent enough. And as I mentioned, that third drive bay does have the uh, two and a half inch SSD mount as well. Now, as usual with QNAP NASs, they're pretty easy to set up and the overall UI that they have obviously the, the web UI is pretty simple pretty easy to use and has a lot of nice features including in the control panel for even things like the resource monitor and the little sort of uh, monitor dashboard kind of pop-up that you can get um, which kind of gives you easy to use and easy to understand stuff like your hard drive smart information and uh, how well they're doing any you know LAN activity or any CPU activity and that sort of stuff it's just nice to see that and all of your messages available there or any issues and errors you have there too there are actually a a lot of customization options and you can also run a whole load of servers including a MySQL server and obviously you can use that with the PHP my admin and stuff like that if you want to and um, you do also have uh, a whole load of media servers including an iTunes media server if you want to and you can use this with Windows Mac and Linux as you would expect the value proposition for the NAS is pretty decent it's currently selling for about 240 pounds at the time of filming in the UK although this may change so feel free to take a look at the top link in the description to find out more or when where you watch this. Now otherwise the, the NAS itself uh, kind of puts itself in a pretty decent price category. It's not too expensive and while it's kind of limited on power and actually limited on a lot of the functionality that you would see with a slightly higher end even QNAP NAS with a lot of the, the you know plexes and that, that sort of thing um, being available on those but not on this. Um, it it kind of puts itself in an interesting position. So do I recommend this NAS? Well generally speaking it's a pretty decent one. The fact that it's missing a lot of functionality 
penalty is uh, definitely a shame. Um, but the three uh, drive configuration is actually pretty nice to see because while the two drive bay nasses are definitely a, a decent price point and a great way to go for the sort of you know average household that just needs to back up their photos or whatever, um, having that acceleration uh, driver, the extra drive bay for you know things like cash acceleration, uh, does mean that it is a lot more usable as a media server NAS and things like that, and even just uh, you know regularly hitting those files to be able to cache them on an SSD is definitely nice to have, but of course it's kind of up to you depending on what you want to do with it, and bear in mind that there is some functionality that's missing from this one, that on some of the other QNAP NASs, especially the 2 and 4 bay models, you do have thanks to the, their kind of upgraded or more usable CPUs. So would I put this on my desk, would I replace my current NAS with this one? Personally, no. I like the, the configuration, I like the options that you have with it, but especially because the fact that it doesn't have things like Plex really means that it's not from me. Now, is it a good NAS and would I recommend it? Yes, I'd be happy to give it a gold award, but uh, just bear that in mind if you are looking for those sorts of options and those sorts of uh, kind of features, uh, just bear that in mind if you are looking at it. As I mentioned, if you do want to check out the NAS, take a look at the top link in the description down below as that will take you to your local Amazon store and you can see pricing when and where you watch this. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos and plenty more like them, then you can obviously subscribe if you're new and check out the bell notification icon for notifications when I go uh, both live on live streams and new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday and if I can remember to do them Saturday. You can also check out the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links which massively help me out and I genuinely thank anyone who uses them. You can also support me directly on Patreon which again link down below. There's some merch down there that I'm currently not wearing today and otherwise that is pretty much it. There's some other videos over here. If you have any questions let me know in the comments down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can and otherwise thank you for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.